Yo, hello everybody <laughs> and greetings to uh, Canada here with the next episode for the Art of Affiliate Management. And today we have the chainsaw wielding industry OG Chris Miller here with us in the talk. Uh, why I say this, we come to this later. Our points today are personal branding and how to shift verticals as an account manager or program owner and make this flawless. And presented is this episode by our good old friends and loyal sponsors, Traffic Manager, the go-to solution if you are setting up a program or a network. So Chris, we know each other like 10 years or something like this, but for the people that don't know you, uh, please introduce yourself and your current hustle. For sure. Man, thanks for having me. This is uh, my first podcast, so I'm, I'm a bit excited, a bit nervous. Uh, yeah, so I worked at, for the large pay sites, uh, sorry, free sites way back in the day, uh, MindGeek. I guess, I, yeah, we could talk about that stuff, right? This is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the past. It's the I don't want past. you. To, I don't want you to get uh, pulled off YouTube or anything. No, no, so, no. So, yeah, I worked uh, selling the advertising for uh, MindGeek's pay, uh, free sites for like uh, seven years or so. Uh, so I got a good understanding of the uh, digital advertising side of the business, specifically on the ad network side. Then uh, after that, uh, I started working for MedCash, uh, which is a, a dating affiliate network. And uh, we just, that's what I've been doing for the past five years. Sorry, I did that for past for five years after MindGeek. And now uh, I took a little hiatus. I started working on my own personal brand and uh, through a very good friend in the industry who we all know, uh, I started working for Undo recently um, for the past year or so, which is a company that, uh, or a product rather, that is for cannabis consumers. So it would help manage your high. And uh, that means Let's say you have a high tolerance or you've had too much uh, THC and you're not feeling comfortable. Or even if you uh, consumed cannabis the night before, let's say, and uh, you're feeling brain fog or like, you know, lethargy in the morning, these products would help you with that. Nutraceutical products, there's no controlled substances, no THC, no cannabis in them whatsoever. Uh, and that's that's what we're working on promoting right now. We just launched the affiliate program uh, within the last few weeks. So I'm looking to explode this product. I think it's crazy. Well, it's very if, interesting. If you make this for alcohol, uh, then me and like 200 homies uh, would directly <laughs> make a monthly subscription on that because sometimes oh. at the conferences, we really have to, uh, have, yeah, we exaggerate it here and there. You know it, and um, you know the adult industry uh, very well. I mean, I also did project outside of uh of adult but in some way i always stayed in some way around there uh why you made now a move to a completely different uh area when you have or when you have a very good and established name in this industry thank you and honestly i feel like um i i stopped i kind of plateaued i felt like i wasn't learning as much and it's not because of uh my previous position or anything like that it's just I, I was in the industry at that point for maybe 12 13 years 14 years and I didn't really like I wanted to learn the other facets of digital advertising and digital marketing and I never got my toes wet with e-commerce uh, and I thought that this would be a very interesting you know opportunity for me to learn it so so that's really why also um, I wanted to be more on the product side. So right now, like Undo is, is our product. Whereas with uh, Medcash, uh, we were, we had a couple uh, white labels, but I mean, we were promoting other people's products. So it's just a different, uh, it was just a different experience that I where wanted. You, where you I, had in, in Medcash at least like API and you build your own lenders or it was not even this, you just got white labels, you got exclusives and maybe some own lenders and that's it. Oh, we, we would build all a, a ton of our landers. Honestly, the ones that we built in house, uh, they perform the best. So you know, the, the the typical strategy is always like we look at what's you know showing up on the tube sites, and then we you know you rip it, 
maybe change a few things. But that strategy has been like tapped out. So we started just making our own and we uh, we had good leadership. The, my old boss, ES, props to him. He was uh, he, he was really good at that stuff. He he, he knew that we had to add uh, our special touch, our creativity into the uh, uh, in into the marketing. And it worked. It worked really well. So moving from one vertical into a completely different vertical, um, I mean, both is maybe like a little bit more connected to the gray hat industry. Um, maybe I'm wrong because you have nothing like other substances here and you can put it on Facebook and native and God knows what without any restrictions, but it's still a completely different uh, thing. What are the biggest challenges that you already encountered when you have to learn a complete new vertical? Oh my goodness. Yeah. So uh, I started last year in February. So February, 2022. And uh, yeah, it pretty much everything. Like I, uh, it, have you ever heard of the Dunning-Kruger effect? Where yeah, you, uh, yeah, this means you, uh, you, are, you think you are super smart, but you are a big idiot or something like this. I, well, I witnessed that like a thousand times over the past year and a half. So uh, I went in there thinking that I'm going to apply the same like killer strategies uh, that we had at Medcash to this business in a different vertical, and uh, it, it it's not it's not the same at all. So, and and that's fine. But like I figured, okay, I'm just going to go to every affiliate network. I'm going to show them what what this is, and they're going to want to promote it. But the problem is with ecom, uh, especially our products, we can't offer the same payouts that some of these CBD products offer in the space. So we need to find a, a niche type of affiliate. And this has been, uh, th th this was just one of the challenges. So we're working towards, uh, I guess we're working towards figuring out, you know, who our perfect uh, affiliate is and then we're going to start really uh, focusing on them and what they need so it's in your case less working with networks and more like uh having your own direct affiliates so there's going to be direct affiliates and then we want uh, so what i what i see happening here is uh we're going to be working with uh cannabis specific networks who are already used to e-com products being promoted they understand the uh, the affiliates over there, understand the marketing permitted to. And uh, yeah, influencers are going to be a big part of this as well. And that's Especially, a completely different world, of course. Yeah, yeah. And I, and this this has been another strategy that, uh, you know, Dunning-Kruger effect. I figured, okay, every influencer under the sun who, who touches the cannabis space is going to want to work with us. And then, uh, you know, they all want to be paid up front, which is, you know, it's normal, I guess, but I didn't know that at the time. And uh, they the the turnaround time for when like, you know, you start a deal and when it actually comes to fruition takes a long time. It could take like mm. anywhere from four to six weeks to as long as two months. You have to send the product. They have to do a test. They have to review it. They have to create the content. Then if the contents, uh, you know, the content needs revisions for sure because if they say anything that uh, works against our legal guidelines or uh, you know. We can't we can't use it. So we yeah, have to yeah I understand. Or we have to edit. It's very very touchy uh, promoting cannabis products in this in the U.S. and then even using that word on your ads. So our products don't contain any of these uh, any controlled substances like like I mentioned before, no THC, whatever, no cannabis. But just that word is enough to have us like banned on on Meta, for example. So it's just we're we're learning how to navigate the marketing space in this vertical. So um, I had a fair share of um, of this experience as well. It was with telemedicine and copy trading many, many, many years ago. So it was stuff that was practically not really existing for um, for affiliations. Um, I mean, there was at the same time coming out a few companies. Uh, Crack, Crack Revenue came out with Blue Chew and Broker Babe yeah. came out at uh, uh, at the same time with uh with a with a product mail excel and uh, all of them are still existing um I'm very and familiar it was, with all of the above it was like for me for half a year or so a very important task to 
educate um, affiliates about it. With the copy trading, I was not really um, so successful. I was maybe also not feeling it with trading their, their stuff. So maybe that's why I could not communicate it to the team and they could not communicate it to the affiliates. And I think I also never made even a speech about it. With telemedicine, I was going from conference to conference and it was like uh, very nice. And I still think it's like an absolute brilliant product. So um, how is it for you with Undo? It's also not something that is like since 20 years in the supermarket, they go to Walmart and they find it there. So um, how is it with the education of the affiliates? Um, do you have to make a lot of educational work now, explain the product or the people are aware of it and it's then still coming down to regular affiliate management with them? So uh, right now, affiliates brand new with us. So we like literally launched a couple months ago. And uh, honestly, I'm just waiting on a few more things. So a few like marketing material before we can actually go live. Like if you want to be an affiliate today and just send clicks directly to the storefront, I mean, you could do it, but, you know, I'd rather have a nice landing page uh, created with a couple variations before we start uh, accepting affiliate traffic. Basically, I, I want to make sure that we're set up for success. And uh, the only way to do that is to have like the ability to split test multiple pages uh, in between sending people you know, from the ad or from, from the banner or the email or the ad to the store. Do you want to create also something like uh, content by yourself? I mean, not content that the affiliate can sell it, but uh, content where you explain what this product is about and maybe best practice. Otherwise, you have to explain it to everybody that signs up there. So, but so it has yes, not even touching, signed up yet. So touching back on the education First, yes, we have to educate affiliates on how to promote it and how to promote it in a compliant fashion. But also, this there's nothing like this product on the market yet. You know, like up until very recently, people were treating like their cannabis overconsumption with like, you know, black pepper and, and, and like lemon juice and stuff. And it's, it's just or CBD, which is it doesn't it's not it doesn't work. It's, yes. You know, in so many words at least in my experience. Um, so so a, a big part of this is like, yeah, bro, but does it work? So then we have to explain the science behind it. Uh, and once that's explained, and once people actually test it and, and take the, um, the uh, soft gels correctly, uh, we've only had good reviews so far, unless people were mixing it with like, you know, if you go out partying all night, smoked weed, drank, did whatever, you know, whatever else, like, of course, you're not going to really notice the effects of, of undo. But, uh, and this is part of the education. We have to just, you know, keep letting people know exactly how to use it and when. So how are you generating at the moment the traffic? Do you have like internal media buying to uh, be able to develop all these best landing pages? Is it these influencers or, or what is generating at the moment the sales? So because we just launched maybe a few months ago, there we have a, a brick and mortar presence across the US. So a lot of, um, ah. yeah, so uh, we are already, man, I don't want to mess up the numbers. So I'm going to say, I'm going to lowball it and say we're in 50 plus dispensaries around the US, which is the first steps. And now, what is a dispensary? Is a shop or what? It's just a cannabis, uh, a place where you could buy cannabis. In ah, okay. Yeah, dispensaries. Uh, that, that's how they're referred to. Come on, I'm I'm German. I, I know, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, this is the lingo I use every day. And it's like if we were started talking about CPM, CPC, you know. You, you can find Andu in the dispensers. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> in some of them, anyways. And eventually, we want to get in all of them and hopefully uh, make a presence in Germany. Because but if you, I'm not you mistaken, saying... the laws changed there recently. On, on um, I don't think that it has already changed, but uh, the new government has a very big, um, how shall I call it, alternative part. It's the Green Party, uh, save the tree and smoke weed like practically this is part of their program. And they are very powerful in the meantime. And um, I would not be surprised if they are like uh, taking over um, certain things like this. I'm totally pro it. I'm not interested in smoking weed. I don't care about it, but why it should be uh, why it should be illegal? I mean, really. Yeah, I I completely agree with you. I'm very biased, but uh, 
I, I, I live and let live. I mean, as long and honestly, no one ever died from a can cannabis overdose. You know, you just pass out. You just fall asleep. Like, yeah. whereas anyways, we don't we, I don't want to get into the whole like pharmaceutical uh, pain relief debates or anything like that. Do you know why it's forbidden? Why uh, cannabis is forbidden even? It, well, in the U.S.? Yeah, or, how it started because I know, was I, I, I know crazy, it because yeah. I was I was curious and it was just one guy that didn't want to lose the job after the prohibition. Yeah, well that and uh I think he was in control of the paper industry and hemp, which is you know the 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 plant, the cannabis plant, was a good alternative to paper. And he so they started spreading rumors like that you know this drug cannabis which they called marijuana is what the mexican used to come like you know be uh, aggressive towards white women and they use they use that angle to to make the the the, the medicine illegal which is crazy man the guy is an asshole but we have to give him respect for his marketing <laughs> oh yeah he's look, like look. he's he's most probably dead since 80 years and the stuff is still like super regulated or even forbidden all over the world i mean don't get me started because because i <laughs> alcohol seems to be the most dangerous one in my opinion but teach their own yeah i mean it is as it is but it's getting uh more uh more open i mean thailand when you were getting catched with something they were sending you Bro. to jail for god knows what uh what time and now now it's legal they there it, right yeah i think it's it's uh it's no longer so, illegal or is it like, I forget. No, the no, words, it's, but... um, I mean, um, exactly. I don't know it, but uh, the last time I was in Thailand was now in December and I wasn't in Thailand for like um, two, three years because of the kid. I could not go to affiliate world and yeah. not making, uh, making a longer holiday. But now when I returned, I saw everywhere coffee shops. I was thinking I'm in, uh, <laughs> in Amsterdam that's, or something like this. Really? That's and such I'm... a dramatic shift. That's crazy. It went from yeah. like 10 years in jail minimum to, to being legal. To nothing. That's wild. Yeah. yeah. So maybe you find even a partner in Thailand and you make it with them. I mean, in Thailand, you always need a local guy. Otherwise, you can forget it. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I yeah. think there's like uh, also like um, a big opportunity uh, waiting. So um, what else we have here? What type of affiliate are the most open-minded for this product? Okay. We had it also already with influencers. I touched on it a bit. Yeah, I'm still learning, but it definitely like it's definitely people who are already operating in the cannabis space, mm -hmm. and um, there, yeah. So uh, there are other affiliates who promote CBD products, uh, and you must have seen the offers on Offer Vault. You know, hundred twenty dollars, hundred fifty dollars PPS. This yeah, is not exactly it. the same. Th these are like, it's like the the muscle pills. You know, mm. it's it's one type of uh, formula, but it it checks all the boxes. So, uh, and I I just find that those products aren't really like, if you're a cannabis consumer, you already know that those pro like CB do doesn't really do anything. It doesn't make your muscles bigger. It doesn't make you better in bed. But they're the the marketing on those products, the angle that they use. Uh, anyways, we don't have to use that part if you don't want it. <laughs> no, no, no. We want it. Here's everything unfiltered. And oh, the, right, we, all, right, right. we all know how it is. I mean, this is like a very, uh, very specific audience and we all have to make our, our living. Okay. Um, what is the next thing? Personal branding as an industry persona. Do you think people have become more replaceable and less unique characters like 10 years ago? That's a great question. Man, uh, I've been living in my sphere, my bubble for for so long. I I haven't. I can't really tell. I like. I don't know. I think that this, if you want to make it work in in this industry or any industry for that matter, if you're passionate, I think having a personal, like look look what you're doing with AFPEL, like. Already, in my opinion, you were a superstar at, uh, at all these shows. So it only makes sense for you to have your own personal brand, too. I think, Afpal, this is why I reached out to you. I think that this is a brilliant idea. What you're doing 
And also the value that you're bringing is, is exceptional. I watched a few of your videos um, where you're giving speeches. Bro, this is, you're giving away the secret sauce. Yeah. Thank sort you. Of, you know, I think that, that the value you're, you're creating is, is massive. You know what I have to say, what is a little bit the difference between what I try to do and what I see in general with people teaching stuff. A lot of people are explaining what to do, but not how to do. So I have, I have sometimes even the problem that I miss a little bit the, um, the why. So, for example, I was going to Kinza in Dubai and I spoke there about uh, building affiliate management teams. And um, my favorite topic is always the CRM system that so many people are not using or not using proper or so. So, and um, I was, this was like always returning in this speech. Like, yeah, and this guy has to do business development and his task is to put all the new leads in the CRM system. So everybody in this conference was understanding, okay, it's good to have it and what the people have to do it. But it was totally missing why. So I returned to the um, to the video uh, in YouTube where they uploaded it, and it was everything in uh, in Russian, I think, uh, or Ukrainian, and mm. I had to translate it. And they were talking about this. They say, "Okay, the guy speaks always about the CRM system, but why we shall use it? They know now what to do with it, but not the reason why. But usually, when you have this uh, coaching or let's say Google courses." Um, it doesn't matter in which industry it is. It's covering a lot uh, what you have to do, but not how. Right now is another uh, conference more dedicated to affiliate management. So I tapped in there now for two hours or something like this. And everything that they are saying is super legit. You see that these are not bullshitters, but they are just speaking about what you have to have, but not how. Like, hey, you have to have like a proper onboarding uh, onboarding structure or something like this. And then they show an example about um, what, uh, what an affiliate manager should do. But it was not really detailed. So somebody is not able to copy that and integrate it in their, in their daily work. And uh, that's why I like also to have these talks and uh, speak with people about stuff that is a little bit controversial like um, are people more replaceable than for example 10 years ago because nowadays it's not coming too much characters um, people that are really standing out and that you see on every show and you are you remember the name and you have memories together are replaced by 22 year old people fresh from university and they are so replaceable and they work today here and tomorrow there. They do maybe a better job. They are maybe a better affiliate manager than me because they, they sit down, they are like super motivated, whatever, but they are like so replaceable. And I think you have to build a personal brand to be like really successful over, over the years. I, I see what you mean. Um, I don't know, but is there a replacement for Stefan? Maybe, let's say maybe their day-to-day, -day, they are better at being affiliate managers. But that's not your job anymore. I mean, you're leading affiliate managers. You don't have to be an expert at setting up postbacks across every yeah. single channel any or every single platform anymore. You know, you're you're leading the, you know, you're leading this army. And yeah. It's, so, it's so, just but, stuff that I observe because um, I I try to make something like a science out of that. Um, that's also a bit of a difference if you are doing the job and you do it like very well and you are not questioning why things are like um, are like this. Let's say you are like um, you are like a boxer and um, you you box very well but you are never questioning yourself why you can throw a punch like this you will be maybe the best boxer in the world but maybe you cannot explain it to other people and somebody that is observing this and is not boxing so well but he's analyzing um, every move and every reaction and so on can maybe explain it because the guy is sitting down he makes a pause on the video he watches it in slow motion he notes it down and i'm a bit like uh like this guy and i love it and i love also to learn every time i have somebody in the podcast something uh new 
Man, I hope you learned something new with me this time. Yes, 100%. I will watch it again and I will tell you later <laughs> on what I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I learned. So in the beginning of this, and now we are again like at, um, at personal branding, I said the chainsaw wielding Chris Miller. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what was this about? I mean, I remember this like eight or nine years later. What was going on there? Oh, man. Well, we wanted to make a, a commercial that catered to the mainstream with Traffic Junkie. And uh, so we luckily, we had a lot of like uh, producers and professional video editors in-house at MindGeek who just worked for different departments. So... Uh, my old friend Carl, who's still my new, you know, he's still in my life. Obviously, we work together. We're partners with Undo and a couple other projects. But uh, uh, he's your partner. Yeah, one one of them. We're, we're on the, uh, nice. the digital marketing side, and then a uh, really, really um, uh, cool, educated, sweet family uh, are handling the uh, the rest of the marketing and and just uh, the the whole project management side of the uh of undo but anyways touching back on the video yeah we wanted to <laughs> we wanted to put together uh, uh just an ad, an ad that kind of shows exactly how it goes so at the beginning of the video you know i guess people would assume that you know working at one of these companies is just fun and games with like porn stars and you know next to the pool and all that and then you know we have it's really like this and we shift to me walking around the office with a team of professionals and uh and i don't know the chainsaw was just for added you know added silliness make it you know and i think you video. are also not wearing pants or so right i may have not been wearing pants in that video i had like <laughs> short, a short bathing suit on <laughs> i don't know we just wanted to jazz it up it was it was I'm absolutely fantastic. That. How Thanks. often you had to how often you had to uh, film it until it was like okay. So it it only took a morning, uh, like a, a full morning. But man, there were some scenes that I had to do. I'm bro, I'm not good at this stuff. I had to do it like 10, 12 times to get it right. I would mess up the lines, or like I was high fiving the guy and I would miss his hand. I <laughs> just did like that, you know. How how they selected you? I mean, you were like a bunch of guys in the company. Uh, I yeah, I, <laughs> I guess because I was at uh, Traffic Junkie, one of the longest, and uh, I, I don't know. I don't think Carl or or anyone else wanted to be on camera. <laughs> yeah, I cannot imagine Carl I don't doing care. it. Like uh, you know, give me it, I'm gonna do it. Uh, so what was the impact um, on this for you, but also for the company? It had it had some impact or nothing? Nah, not really. It made it, it made uh, the, the people from the industry laugh. And that's, you know what, that was great. What happened, mm. we got to do that. But I don't think it really made an impact. We got so many thumbs down on YouTube because everyone thought it was going to be like this, this the, the 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 title is clickbaity like the truth behind advertising on adult sites and then it was just a, a kind of a commercial for traffic junkie so anyone who's not part of the industry was definitely confused or, or annoyed but uh it, it was still very fun i um i tried now to make my first clip as well for afpal well, and well, i uh, yeah, of course, not uh, something like that complicated, but um, I decided that um, I'm stupid that I do practically everything and I still want to do a lot of stuff for free and just for the good cause and to, I don't know, provide a certain quality for the industry when it comes to education. But for example, I was sending around 50 people in new jobs and um, I never got a That's dime really nice. beside masters in cash, where I'm anyway on the on the payroll. And um, I ask also people, I even sent to agency stuff and I said like, hey, do I get a kickback? No, 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 we don't have a plan for this. We don't have a referral. So I said, it's you know what? I such a convenient I, way to not pay people. <laughs> yeah, you know, now I said like, okay, um, I get still like all these CDs. I think um, like two months ago, I got like in uh, one week, something like 15 or 20 CDs. 
and I said, okay, I mean, um, I was making it before without any effort. So I simply just coordinated. Okay, I have now a software where all the stuff goes inside. And to push this, I made now also a video. I filmed something and I felt like a total idiot. I, I made everything myself, the script. It was filmed by a friend within like 15 minutes. So I'm not even sure when it's fed, already edited if I will publish it, but most probably oh, I will watch really it. See it. I uh, yeah, I, I I will upload it anyway. You know me; I have also no shame. I would be the if I would if I would uh, be at mind geek at this time, and they say Miller will run around in underwear with a chain. So I will say Miller, here is <laughs> ten like dollars. That? Let me do it, please. <laughs> I want to do that. Okay. Um, do we have something more here? Ah, yes. The last question. Uh, what things somebody can do for the personal tra uh, personal training, personal training that does not come from a big company that has a budget or a creative team. Okay, well, wait, can you say it again? I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, okay. I said it also sloppy. What things somebody can do for personal branding that does not come from a big company um, that has a big budget or oh, a okay, own creative so, yeah, team? You, man, you don't have to shoot a commercial or, uh, or like you don't need a, a high budget to get your word out there. I mean, look at all these people uh, who are creating TikTok accounts, Instagram accounts, YouTube accounts with, you know, they're just doing it. Like the hardest part, I think, is getting on the camera, saying stuff, then posting it and then being consistent about it. But if you are and if you know what you're talking about, you're going to build your personal brand. There are and so personal, many like. And personal brand nowadays means generate content. I think that's a it's a must at this point. Otherwise, how are you going to get your name out there organically? I, I just I don't know. Without especially with no budget, this is the quickest way to do it. And I I've been this is why look, I think that your idea is brilliant. There's so many things that you can do to really uh, like I don't know your content's fantastic, but uh, but maybe you're not you know there are some people who are YouTubers and then they're affiliate gurus second. You're an affiliate or a digital marketing guru first, and the, and you know, and then you're, mo yeah, you're moving yeah. into the, uh, yeah, you're moving into the uh, the YouTuber role, and this is like such a good tool for your business, man. It's very this hard for opinion. me to adapt. It's very hard for me to adapt because I just want to create this content. I want to speak with people. I want to be creative, but I don't want to think it to the end. Um, I'm very well aware of the things where I uh, where I suck. I mean, all these kind of things, That's like we film, for example, now we have here free Zoom account. I was already joking with uh, with Mike that I had the podcast like last week, like, okay, we have to speak up. We have only 40 minutes at Zoom. Now we are again sitting here. I still have not made a premium subscription. I'm still filming it with my computer with only like, I don't know, 100 euros and having maybe somebody, maybe even pay this guy like a small consultancy fee to show me how to film proper with having the iPhone camera connected, having a microphone, I would bring it to such a better level and I'm not doing it. This is part of the process, right? I mean, it is, you, yeah. you, you're not starting off as a professional. It takes so many hours and every, every time you do something, you get a little better at it, right? Yeah. I hired now also a project manager for all the other things like the HR stuff and the homepage. And there are some other things because I'm, you're I'm busy, not, bro. You got a yeah, lot I of mean, stuff I going mean, on. Uh, the, the point is that um, the, the main job that I have is masters in cash and I work there full time. This is what uh, people are sometimes not seeing because online is coming one podcast per month for masters in cash. And maybe every six seven weeks we have like a new product or like a new niche and uh, i post about it but there's not so much to to go out there and make content about it so the people are seeing mostly this afpal stuff but in the end of the day afpal is maybe let it be five hours work per week when masters in cash is um is 40 hours that's, that's your fault yeah that pays the bills this is a project that you're growing and eventually yeah. something's so, gonna happen and and it's going to explode and it's going so, to be a very lucrative. 
So I decided because Afpal makes money um, and I decided to take now a, a, a project manager to coordinate the HR staff to set up the website um, and uh, and some other things. Because otherwise this will, yeah. man, I'm, I'm simply when it comes to these uh, things, not so professional. And this is something I can advise everybody, uh, find your mistakes and then outsource it if you cannot fix it yourself within half a year. And I try it now since um, November, November uh, 2022. So this is now eight months. And now I finally decided to, to, to outsource stuff. Good, good. And uh, like, have you ever, and maybe we could talk about it after, but have you ever considered like, I don't know, making YouTube shorts? Because some of the long, tail, long yeah. form content, it might discourage someone who just wants like a quick answer. Yeah. And if you're able to create snippets of your content, you know, like, like, you know, the, the Joe Rogan experience clips, and it's just like five, 10 minutes of like the meat and potatoes of certain topics. I made you know, this um, creates more content and might. Open. I know they also recommend. I'm sure you already know all this. I, I was just, you know, I'm just asking. So what I want to do is um, I, uh, I will make the, the teaser for this podcast different. Before I was just making a picture and this is at the moment not engaging. If you upload a reel, it gets way more um, attention. Mm. And um, before I was filming, or not before, uh, so far is only uploaded stuff that I practically film with my phone and then I upload it. So now I will have cut it. I make like a proper cover picture and then it plays after two seconds and so on. So yeah, as oh, you nice. said, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a process. Yeah. Yeah. And also like, I mean, you gave me an insights into your life. Not only are you managing this business, you have AFPAL, uh, masters in cash, and you have a kid. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot, it's a lot to do on your own. It is. This is it also is. impressive, bro. Props to you. I mean, this uh, podcasts are not just like an interview. It's more like um, a dialogue in the most cases, especially when yeah. you are, let's say, speaking on um, on the on the same level. It's not like just asking questions. I I share my stuff as well. Anyway, as I said, not professional Zoom version. So in one minute, they are cutting us. All so right. I I have to buy this anyway, Chris. 1000 times thank you for reaching out uh, to me Amen. and uh, having this uh, great talk i wish you, you and the entire old uh, mind geek crew that is involved there all the best of success with Andu and uh, thank you thanks also so very much, much traffic manager for sponsoring this episode thanks traffic manager thanks Stefan. man this is awesome i really appreciate it bro Speak soon. Take care. Yes, and sir. everybody Talk watching soon. this, have a great, successful day. Stay healthy. Ciao. Thank you. Bye-bye.